Hi, and welcome to section 52 of my SwiftUI course. Today we're going to learn how to implement Firebase with SwiftUI. So the first thing you need to do is to sign in with your Google account. In this section, I link to this guide where you're going to learn step by step what you need to do in order to install Firebase. But don't worry, I'm going to walk you through it. First of all, we're going to need Xcode and CocoaPods, which is a package manager that has been around for way longer than the Swift package manager, and it supports a lot more libraries, such as Firebase. So we're definitely gonna get back to this. First, we're gonna need to sign into Firebase and then create a Firebase project. So if you open on the plus sign here, there's a link to the Firebase console, and if you click here, this is where you're gonna see all of your Firebase projects. I'm gonna go ahead and create a project. I'm going to name it design code dash swift ui course and feel free to use whatever name suits you then i'm gonna click next next again if you happen to have google analytics you can attach it to one of your accounts i'm gonna select design code and then create project this is going to take a little bit of time but when it's done you can click on continue and this is your firebase dashboard next we're gonna click on the settings icon and here we're gonna to go to project settings. Then we're gonna set up an iOS app. So we're gonna click on the iOS icon. For the iOS bundle ID, it is very important that you go to Xcode and then you go to project settings. Here you're gonna find the bundle identifier. So we're gonna copy this, make sure to be in general and target design code. And then we're going to paste that bundle ID. Next, we're gonna register app. And then it's telling you to download the Google service info.plis and to install that to your Xcode project. So we're gonna go back to Xcode and find exactly that file. I'm going to drag and drop that file, let's say right after Lottie. And make sure to select destination copy items if needed, create groups and add to targets design code. So you should see a file like this. And now back to the Firebase console, I'm gonna click on next. So now it's asking me to install CocoaPods and it has a website, we're gonna click on it. We have to install CocoaPods and the command to install it has to be done using the terminal. So we're gonna copy this from sudo until CocoaPods and then we're gonna open the terminal. The terminal is an application that is available on every Mac and here we're going to paste that command and then we're going to press enter. It's going to ask for your password. This is going to be your Mac password. And after entering it, you're going to press enter. It's going to install CocoaPods. After a few minutes, it's going to finish installing. And this is where we're going to go to our project and install to our project. So we're going to type CD, which means that we're going to jump to this folder and then using your finder, you're gonna go ahead and search for that folder where you created your Xcode project. It's probably gonna be in downloads or desktop and then the name of the Xcode project. So I'm gonna drag and drop this to terminal and it's going to autocomplete the name and the path to my Xcode project and then press enter. Afterwards, you're gonna have to type pod in it. This is going to initialize CocoaPods in your project. When it's done, it's going to create a pod file where you can put the names of the libraries that you're going to use. So I'm going to type open pod file with capital P, enter. So this is going to open the file in a text format. And then if you come back to the configuration from your Firebase console, you're gonna see that we're here after pod in it, it's asking you to add this text, but this is not complete. It's only going to add Firebase analytics. We're gonna need more than this. We're actually gonna go to the original guide and let's see, we did step one, step two, and then step three, which is the info plist. And then now we're at step four, right after pod init. So the text that we need to add is here. You can copy to clipboard and then back to that text file. We're going to put that right after where it says pods for design code, enter, enter, and then paste the content. So we're gonna use analytics, auth, which is what we're gonna learn today, 
And Firestore is for database. So auth is just for login and Firestore is for all the rest of the data. But today we're only going to cover authentication. Once you're done, make sure to save it. So command S and then we can close the file. Back to the terminal, we're going to do one last command, which is pod install, enter. Again, this is going to take a few minutes, but once you're done, we're going to type open dot enter. This is going to open this folder directly to your finder. Now, this is the part that is key about CocoaPods is that from now on, you're going to have to open the XE workspace instead. So let's go back to Xcode. We're going to have to close this. So command W and back to our finder, we're going to double click the XE workspace file. When it's open, you're going to see the Swift package dependencies on the left and also design code as well as the pods. Let's go back to design code. We're going to open the design code folder and that's exactly where we left off. Back to the setup guide, there's just one final step, which is to initialize Firebase in the app. So we're going to go to UI application delegate. You know, our Swift UI app, that's actually the app delegate file. And we're going to have to import Firebase and then configure it inside did finish launching with options. So let's do exactly that. I'm going to copy these two lines of code. So copy. Then in Xcode, I'm going to go to app delegate. I'm going to go ahead and import Firebase. Then I'm going to find did finish launching with options and before return true. So right here, I'm going to paste the two lines of code. So that's it. You're ready to use Firebase in your app. I know this is a lot of step and I also know that CocoaPods definitely add a level of complexity that most beginners are not used to. But please keep in mind that this technique is extremely powerful. It's going to give you access to not just Firebase, but thousands of libraries out there that have been created over the years before SwiftUI came along. All right. So remember our iOS setup from the Firebase console? Well, let's finish that. We're going to go here at step three. We're going to click next. And this step is already taken care of, which was to configure Firebase in the app delegate. Let's run next again. So this fifth step is to verify if it is installed correctly. So we can go to Xcode, for example, and then we can run on the iOS simulator. So after you finish building the app and you wait a few minutes, you're going to see that it's going to say, congratulations, Firebase has been added. Let's click on continue to console. And now we can start using Firebase authentication. On the left side, I'm going to click authentication. And here I'm going to set up the sign in method. I'll go with the email password. So click on it and make sure to enable the first one and not the second one, because the second one is for passwordless, which is known as the magic link. So let's go ahead and click save. And now I'm going to go to the tabs on the left side. It says users. I'm going to click on it. Usually from the app, you have the option to sign up. But in this section, we're only going to deal with login. So we're going to click on add user. And then we're going to manually create a dummy account to test the login. So let's put test at email.com for the password is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to click on add user. Great. So now that the database part is done and configured, we can go to the login view. And let me just hide the inspector as well as the navigator. And from here, let's import Firebase first. Then let's scroll to the login function. And this is, this is where we're going to make a Firebase call. Let me do that after the dispatch queue. So remember that we use this to fake an API call. Well, now we're going to do the real thing. So after that, I'm going to type auth with a capital A. And this is using the Firebase library dot auth parentheses dot sign in. And here we have a bunch of options. The one that we're going to use is the one with email, password and completion. So let's select that one and double click for the email. It's simple. We're going to use the states. So email password password. Completion, we're going to press enter. 
Now it's going to return the data and the error. So for the data, we're going to call it result. For the error, error. So from here, there are two things that can happen. One, there's an error. Second, it's successful. Let's deal with the error first. We're going to type if error is not equal to nil, curly braces, then we're going to change the alert message. So self.alert message. And then we're going to use the error data that we're receiving from the API call dot localized description. So this has to be a string. So we're going to set a fallback. So question mark, question mark, double quotes. This is necessary when you have an optional and you might get a response that is nil. So we're almost ready to test this. And right now we can't run both the API call and the fake call. So we're going to have to move the code to the API call. First of all, we're going to move the line that says hide the loading animation. We're going to move that right after the API call. Then we're going to uncomment the line that says show the alert. And we're going to move that for the condition where there's an error. Then we're going to create an else statement. So when there's no error, which means if it's successful, we're going to copy and paste the cell is successful is equal to true, which means show the success screen and also the two seconds delay to hide the success screen. Let's not forget to delete the dispatch queue that is empty now. Let's test our app. We're going to do option command NP. I'm going to press play. So unfortunately, you cannot test Firebase with the preview. If you click on login, it's just going to be a blank screen. What you're going to need to do is to test on your iOS simulator. Now, once you're running the app, you click on login. It's going to give you the error message, which means that it works. Let's try with the email. So test at email.com. Click login. Again, we don't have a password. Let's try with a password. One, two, three, four, five, six. Login and boom, we have the loading. It's a bit fast. And then it shows the success screen after two seconds, it hides the success screen. One small detail that we can add is just to reset these fields. So that's easy. We can just do self.email is equal to nothing and self.password is equal to nothing. And we're doing this after we're hiding the success screen. I'm going to press command R to run the app again. I'm going to put the password first. So one, two, three, four, five, six, login. And the error is good because it tells me that the email is not correct. Let's correct that. So test at email.com, login. Then the login is successful and we reset the fields. And here I'm not sure why there's a little glitch where the placeholder is not appearing. But from what I've seen, it works on the device. And anyways, we're supposed to hide the screen after login. In the next session, we're going to learn about environment objects, which is really good for data that should be shared across the entire app. For example, when the user logs in, we want to keep that data consistent across the app and easily get it from anywhere so that you can either show the login screen or once logged in, you're supposed to show the avatar and the account menu. I'll teach that in the next session. I'll see you then.